For starters, I have to say that I cannot and I will not give my name. When I began working at the site that I'm currently at, I was forced to sign an NDA. It was very detailed and clearly laid out the punishments for talking about the site. They will erase me from existence. But the world needs to know these places and these things do exist. A little backstory. I didn't always work as a corrections officer at a secret government black site. I used to be just a normal officer, like thousands all over the country. That was until one day. I used to work at one of the largest prisons on the East Coast, and one afternoon, we had a particularly violent riot on a C-tier. Several inmates and a few officers died in the riot. After we regained control of the tier and were finished cleaning up the blood in the bodies, a major from over in our administration wing came down to talk to me. He said that he was watching the CCTV footage of the riot and was very impressed with how calm and collected I appeared to be during the whole incident. I thanked him and I assumed our conversation was over and I went to leave. Right then, he grabbed my arm and he said, Wait, I have a job opportunity for someone like you. Naturally, I was curious, and so I agreed to the promotion he was offering me. I was instructed to report to an address and to tell no one. Don't speak about my new assignment. As far as anybody knows, I've been relocated to HR in an off-site location as a result of PTSD from the night of the riot. I do as I'm told and I report to the address given to me in my new uniform. The uniform, by the way, is very nondescript. It's meant to blend in with civilian clothing and not raise any unwanted attention to us. I showed up at the location, which looks like a large abandoned warehouse at the end of an old country road. My first thought is, this can't be right. But then somebody in the same uniform as me shows up out of nowhere. I never saw where they came from, and personally, I would swear in a stack of Bibles that they just appeared out of thin air. But anyways, this large guy walks up to my truck and checks my ID and instructs me to drive up to the building and turn my lights off and follow the arrows. By now, it's like 9 at night and it's very dark out, so I initially want to question this man about turning my lights off and how I'm supposed to follow anything in near complete darkness. But before I can, he disappears again. Rather than argue with thin air, I proceed forward and just before I get to the building, I turn off my headlights. Just as soon as I do, a large red arrow suddenly flashes up in front of me. I swear that I must be going crazy. That arrow was not there a second ago and that I'm sure of. I follow the arrow to the corner of the warehouse looking building and I see a square illuminated on the ground and another arrow pointing at it. I guess I'm supposed to park there. I stop my truck and I kill the engine. I grab my lunchbox and, just as I'm about to open the door and get out, the square under my truck gets brighter, to the point where I cannot see anything past my hood anymore. As soon as it started, it quit, and darkness took over once more. Freaking out and trying to will my eyesight to readjust to the darkness, I look around. This is definitely not the same spot I had stopped my truck. All of a sudden, there were other vehicles around mine, like a normal parking lot. There is a sign in the front of my truck with just a set of numbers on it, 924. I willed myself to memorize those three numbers, so I could refine my truck if things ended up getting weirder. Soon as I stepped foot out of my truck, two more men came from the far side of this magical parking lot to greet me. Nervous and very confused, I tried to extend my hand and introduce myself. As soon as I did, the man on the right shouted at me. 
No names. It's too dangerous here for names. I'm 794 and he's 551. What did he mean by, it's too dangerous here for names? What the hell did I get myself into? But before I could get too far into my internal monologue, 794 grabs me and says, 387's going to want to meet you. Great, more freaking numbers to remember, on top of my parking space. The two guys lead me into a large plush office where a woman was sitting behind a desk and appeared to be waiting for me. She stood up at my entrance and shook my hand and said that she was 387. She said that she was in charge of this site and any questions or concerns I should have to bring them to her. I thanked her and said that I would. I then asked her, Why does everybody use numbers instead of their names here? She informed me that the kind of inmates that were housed at this site are so dangerous that if they get any piece of personal information about you, it could be the end of you, your family, or your whole gene pool. This woman's screwing with me, I thought. Play a joke on the new guy. I started laughing at this, but then I quickly realized that 387, 551, and 794 weren't laughing at all and they actually looked kind of pissed about it. So I quickly bit my tongue and I shut up. 387 then went on to explain that this site is a government black site and it doesn't exist as far as anybody is concerned, and that I may never talk about it. She tells me that my new identity is 924, and sends me out with 794 as my FTO. 794 leads me out to what he calls East Block. He walks me into the officer's station and shows me some of the pod controls, the emergency equipment, and the radios. All pretty routine stuff if I'm being perfectly honest. But that's when I notice. The pod control panel doesn't have any control switches to open or shut any of the cell doors. I ask 794 about that and he informs me. That's because we don't open their cells. Ever. We don't open the cells ever? What a weird prison. How do you send them down for a sick call? How do they get visits? How do they make phone calls? Remember now that I just came from a normal prison. I'm a noob to the mess that I just landed in. 794 explains that our inmates don't get any of those things and it's best that way. And so instead of delaying my constant questions about what the hell is going on here, he decides to take me out on the tier for a count. A count is something that I understood. I can do count. But being the rookie, 794 goes with me and shadows my every step. He gives me a clipboard with a roster of names and cell locations and off I go up to the tier. The very first cell I approached I'm reminded, don't open the cell. I check my roster and I see cell 111B houses an inmate named Joe. No last name, just Joe. I look in the cell but I see a woman. And she's crying and begging 794 for help and to let her out. I look to him for answers, but all he does is reach out with a high voltage taser and zap the woman. Before I can voice my anger with his uncalled for response, I hear bones cracking. I turn back to Joe's cell and the woman who was there before looks like her skin is melting away, and she's growing by about two feet. Until it all stops and before my eyes stands, my father staring at me. Sensing my confusion and I'm guessing assuming I was going to do or say something incredibly dangerous and stupid, 794 dragged me away and back to the officer station. When I finally regained myself, he explained to me that Joe is a shape-shifting telepath from an alternate dimension, and his only reason for existing is to get close to humans and manipulate their feelings and suck out their life force to sustain their own. 794 then tells me that Joe is nothing compared to what else they house here. Off that piece of information, I soon learn is a grave understatement. 
Apparently this site's whole existence and purpose is to capture and contain creatures and beings deemed too dangerous by the organization to coexist with humans. These beings come here through wormholes and apparently most can blend seamlessly with humanity and cause little disruption in day to day life. But there are the select few that live for chaos and discord. And it's our job to minimize them and keep them hidden. Humanity can never know. Is the model posted everywhere in the facility? Honestly, after years of seeing it every time I turn a corner or enter a room, I'm sick and tired of it. Personally, I believe in the freedom of information. And the public needs to know about these kinds of places. And yes, I said places. There's a lot of them out there. But the reason that I tell this is to not so much blow the lid off of my employer and expose the world to the secrets of a few black sites. No. I'm here because, a few days ago, we had a containment anomaly. One of our more vicious and dangerous prisoners escaped. And frankly, we can't find him. Not for a lack of trying, but... This one has a list of skills and abilities that makes him very difficult to track. We call him Father, only because all the other inmates seem to worship him. We had to keep him in a wing all day by himself because every time he was housed near others, they would get more violent and agitated and dangerous to deal with. And so the organization built a whole wing just for him. But the day that we were scheduled to move, Father... Something went wrong. We had a power surge and lost a few control panels, which normally isn't too big of a deal because we have a fast boot backup generators that get us back online quickly. But for some reason this day, the generators didn't come up like they were supposed to, and the panels stayed down for too long, and a few containment cells opened by mistake. We managed to recapture all the escapees with minimal damage, that is, all but father. According to officers on his tier, and CCTV tapes as soon as his door opened, he vanished. And that's discomforting because invisibility isn't even on his list of known abilities. And we keep very detailed lists of all our inmates' powers and abilities. And so I'm here trying to warn the world, give you the heads up your government should, here is everything we know about Father. He normally stands about six feet tall, but he can make himself taller or shorter based on his intentions at that moment, but never more than a few inches. His hair color varies with each person who sees him, so stay in pairs with people you know and trust, and ask everybody what hair color they see. If it's not the same hair color that you see, run. He has the abilities we know of to read minds, teleport, adjust his appearance to be the most attractive version of himself to whoever looks at him. He will draw people to him with his charm and his charisma. Oh, and let's not forget, we now know that he can become invisible. From what we know about Father, he came to Earth from another parallel dimension that he destroyed, and he intends to do the same here. He begins by gaining a following, and then moving into seats of power and control before attempting to become a world leader of some sort, with the ability to control whole governments and military personnel. And then he tries to start wars on massive scale, and use weapons of mass destruction to decimate whole planets before moving on to his next victim. If you or anybody you know happens to spot somebody fitting this description, do not under any circumstances approach him. Run away. Get to a safe location and call the authorities. We are working with all local, state, and federal entities, and they will know how to contact us and what to do next. I'm just hoping this message gets out there before Father has had too much time to gain a following and gets into a seat of power. Stay safe, people. Stay safe. Thanks to many reported sightings, my accounts were discovered and I was fished out by my employers. I never thought that it was necessary to explain that the call numbers I listed were incorrect including my own. 
I did all of this to protect myself and those that I work for. But even with giving vague information about me and wrong call signs, my employer still managed to flush me out. But not all news is bad news. After a lengthy and thorough cussing out for my employers, it was decided that as long as I never disclose locations of our sites, our true call numbers, or any details that may be detrimental to our security, then I may continue my page and any updates that we have on Father as we find them. With everything being heavily scrutinized first, of course, most if not all of these decisions were made at the interest of human safety. My organization believes in preserving human life first and foremost, and where we operate on the fringe of known and unknown in times like this, they feel some information needs to be disclosed. So on to the update, the last known whereabouts of Father. We last had contact with a sister site of ours on the Eastern Hemisphere that claimed to have had eyes on a being fitting the description. But by the time we were able to mobilize a containment unit equipped to handle him, he vanished again. From what info we have been able to gather on Father, he has already amassed a small following of loyalists and is planning to take control of a village near the equator on the western hemisphere in a tropical environment. Again, I'm sorry for the vagueness on these updates, but everything I say now is being screened. Anyway, Father has approximately 30 followers based off current intel, and they are recruiting heavily for him. He plans to overthrow the small village's peaceful government and see himself as leader. Now we're assuming from there that he will bring the whole village into his flock and attempt to move on to the next village. And so on and so on. That is, if we don't stop him first. We are moving fast and putting together a task force specially designed to handle him. There are a bunch of top tier special ops warriors from every branch of the military. And yes I know, everybody has their favorites when it comes to the branches, but here we utilize all of them because they all bring something to the table that the others don't. So in the interest of saving the human race from complete destruction, let's keep the branch battles to a minimum. This task force is comprised of 300 men and women. They will all be dressed in very nondescript clothing. They will be very unassuming at first glance. You may not even notice them. And that's the point. We are placing them strategically around the world, nearer in all the world leaders' homes and palaces. Their only mission is to keep our world leaders from being harmed by father. And believe me, they're good at their jobs. They will not attempt to capture father, they are only protectors. If they see somebody fitting this vague description, my suggestion is giving them plenty of space. Now we will have 23 mobile command units both in air and on the ground moving at all times to help locate father's exact location. These command units look just like ordinary commuter airlines and commuter buses, but if you're attempting to get onto a bus and it doesn't open its doors for you, now you know why. Okay, enough about our task force and command units. The real reason you're back here. The real update on father. Honestly, we know very little about his whereabouts or what he's up to. A lot of what we know is speculation based on past run-ins we had with him when we captured him. We're mostly just assuming that he's a one-trick pony and going to do the same thing again and he'll slip up and we'll be there to capture him just like before. But honestly, I can't promise anyone that. We got lucky last time. We do know that he was last spotted in a small village near the equator on the western hemisphere. That is true. We also know that he has a small following by this time. Also true. Everything else is mere speculation at this point. And we're really just hoping we're right, and we can capture him before he gains too much influence and power. Now what I can tell you is our backlog of father's history. The mistake that led to his capture the first time. And you can maybe help us see something we're missing, and hopefully catch this monster before it's too late. 
About 20 or so years ago, long before I came to work for the organization, our capture and containment unit was on call of a class 4 being wreaking havoc all over the southwestern United States. A nasty little monster we've named Sizemore, after his affinity to screw with tectonic plates and cause massive earthquakes. Now, the CNC unit was out in the New Mexico area tracking Sizemore down when they came across this man just standing there in the middle of the desert. One unit member put in their report, it was like a mirage, he just showed up out of nowhere. As this mystery man approached the unit, their anomalous meters went crazy, sending spikes all up to 400 bars. Freaking out and thinking quickly, one unit member hit the man with one of our tridimensional stun grenades. It was enough to catch the stranger off guard, and the unit was able to contain him. Containing father was one thing, keeping him in a state of containment was a whole other. For many years, ten guards had to be placed on his watch permanently, no less than ten at any time. And completely against regulation, we used live ammo inside the site's walls while guarding him. Many times, he would figure out a way to bypass our security and slip out of his cell, even with officers watching him 24-7. Luckily though, the site had been fortified years before to minimize the chances of escape, and every time he got out, we eventually found him and recaptured him. With every escape attempt Father made, he got more clever, and we got more brazen with our recapture techniques. There is a creature in our containment that Father has a close affinity for. We call it Gloop, because it has no real form or identity. Gloop just looks like a large mound of flesh-colored slime. It is rather nasty to look at, and even nastier to get close to. Gloop feeds on people. Yes, you heard that right. It sucks you into its mass and that's the end of you. Now one day, an officer noticed a pattern. Every time Father escaped, he always went the same direction. Towards North Block, where Gloop was housed. Noting that in his capture and containment report, we decided one night on a whim to move Gloop and see what happened the next time Father tried escaping. And there would be a next time. A few weeks went by and then Father managed to slip from his newest cell and he went straight for the North Block. We let him go too, seeing if he was going to go for Gloop's old cell. And sure enough he did. When he entered the cell and he found that it was empty, he was enraged. But thinking quickly we shut, locked and electrified that cell and trapped him inside. And that was the cell that he remained in until his most recent escape. We have used Gloop in the past to bait Father out of hiding, but only inside of the facility. We have never and would never take a containment out into the populace and use it as bait. Too many variables, too many things to go wrong. But I won't lie, my command staff have kicked the idea around a bit. Mostly because, like I said, Father has a weakness for Gloop. There seems to be a familiar bond between the two. Gloop consumes people and grows in size and strength, and then somehow Father is able to siphon off some of that power and use it for himself. Alright, I'm being told that I've said too much already. I will update more when available. As always, stay safe people, stay safe. Everyone, I needed to get this message out before we lose total control. I've gone against my organization's orders and I'm posting this from my phone without any review from my superiors. The world needs to know the truth, the unedited truth, not that watered down version they were making me write. Let's back up a bit and cover the basics. Father escaped and this you know. But what I wasn't able to tell you before, it wasn't as much escape as it was, he was let out. Yeah, that's right, you heard me right. That's why I'm going to rouge on this post because 
uh, I just learned the truth myself. And they already know about my post and about how I'm trying to warn the world about potential doom. So as far as they're concerned, I'm a loose end that needs to be tied up soon anyways. So with my time in short supply, as it is, I feel obligated to warn as many people as I can before it's too late. The organization freed Father because they planned to bring about the end of the world. It was a planned attack from the very beginning. Apparently other times that we recaptured him, they were just tests to make sure that they could make it look like an accident when they finally did set him loose on the world. Yes, I know, corrupt government. Who would have guessed it? Spare me the I told you so's and listen because I'm going to tell you everything I accidentally found out and maybe something will be useful in ending this apocalypse. I stumbled into a secret meeting late last night between all of the commanders of the many sites worldwide. They were talking about how the containment breach went perfectly. They mentioned father's whereabouts and about getting Gloop to him to help feed him. The commanders of the sites have all been corrupted by father. From what I've been able to uncover, many of the commanders now were a part of the very first containment team who encountered father out in the New Mexico desert. I'm guessing that they had a greater exposure to his abilities than they initially stated in their reports. They must have been corrupted all those many years ago, and they had been biding time until they were sure that they could free him and make it look like an accidental containment breach. They had been working for Father this whole time, helping to plot the end of the world. Here's what I know. The commanders have freed Gloob to rejoin Father, claiming another containment breach. Apparently, they are like a cosmic fungus type being. Gloop eats organic matter, that being humans, and Father siphons off his life force telepathically from Gloop. One could not live without the other, and they are intertwined telepathically. Gloop will be much easier to spot as it looks like a giant flesh-colored booger. Wherever you see Gloop, you can assure that Father is not far behind. But now we know the one thing that hurts Gloop. Baking soda. I know, I know weird, right? We get rather unconventional when it comes to trying to find weaknesses in these creatures. And we accidentally spilled baking soda on Gloop one day, and it reacted in pain. So find all the baking soda in your house, mix it with two parts water in a balloon, a rubber glove, anything you can throw like a projectile and it'll break upon impact. Your only hopes of survival are to take out Gloop because we know his weakness. Now Father, on the other hand, we don't know his weaknesses. Or rather us, lower on the totem pole, don't know his weaknesses. I'm now more sure than ever that the commanders know what they might be, but no chance that I'm asking them right now. Especially since I'll probably be dead as soon as this is posted. Anyway, everybody must attack Gloop. You must do everything in your power to kill it. If we can starve Father, then maybe just maybe he'll die. It's our only hope for survival, people. You must believe me. I've seen the footage of what he does to the other planets that he came from. And I must say, if he gets to a seat of power, let's just say I'm glad I'll be assassinated and I won't have to live through that hell on Earth. I've been tracking Gloob since the organization freed him without their knowledge and knowing it's returning to Father. The last satellite link I had showed Gloop heading south towards Brazil. I am assuming that Father's in that area since that was what our last intel showed us. If everything I've seen is correct, then Father has taken over a rather large drug cartel and has set himself up as a kingpin and is working in the shadows to undermine the local Brazilian government. Once he has completely undermined the local government, and put key players of his flock in the correct places, he will then move on to the exporting trade market. He plans to ramp up the exporting of cocaine to a level that's never been seen before. 
He is planning on exporting several thousand tons of laced cocaine all over the world. This cocaine is supposed to have trace amounts of his essence in it, and can sway you to his flock without ever needing contact with him. Once swayed, the followers will start relentlessly recruiting more followers, until he has the world's largest sleeper army. Once his sleeper army is large enough, he will activate them and collectively take out all the world leaders at once, in the most calculated attack anybody has ever seen. Now I can say that I still have faith in many of my fellow officers, and I have the utmost faith in our special task force, and I would never want to be the one to try and test their skills. But I fear that even their skills and backgrounds can't stop an attack of that scale. Once all the world leaders are out of the way, he plans to launch all the world's nukes and plummet the world into chaos. Father is going to send the whole planet into a nuclear winter for the next thousand years. Riots, fires, total anarchy will rule. Over 75% of the world's population will be killed off. Crops and livestock will be slaughtered and destroyed to just add to the mayhem and those who survive will be so severely mutated they'll wish for death. And meanwhile, he'll just move on to the next planet in line and start over. Mankind needs to come together in this time of grave danger and stand together to protect one another. We need to stand and fight and not to end up like those other poor planets that fell victim to father's brutality. We are earthlings and we will not fall victim to another planet's monster. We must end father here and now. And so like I said, Gloop is our only chance. We must kill it. It should be somewhere in the Panama Canal by this time. So anybody listening to this in Central America, I beg you to act. Humanity doesn't deserve to die. I would help in any way, but I can hear the boots coming down the hall towards my office now. I can tell my time is nearly up. I'll be erased shortly after this post. But luckily for me, I have the best security measures on my phone, and I'll smash it before they get here so they can't take this post down. Good luck world, I wish I could be there to fight with you. This is for you.